Hello, everybody. I am Jennifer Watkins with the NHSN Protocol and Training Team. Welcome to the 2024 Patient Safety Component Training for Pediatric Ventilator Associated Event Surveillance. Um, I will be assisted by my colleague, Emily Witt, who will be answering questions in the Q&A box. Um, let's get started. Maybe. Okay. Um, I'm going to go off camera, so I am not distracting any of you from the slides. Um, learning objectives for this presentation include being able to explain pediatric ventilator associated events key terms, determining daily minimum values, applying the PDVAE surveillance algorithm, and locating resources for PDVA surveillance and reporting, including the PDVAE calculator. Um, let's start by briefly reviewing the history of the development of the PDVA sur VAE surveillance definition. Ventilated patients are at risk for complications and poor outcomes. Um, ventilator associated uh, complications can lead to a long duration of mechanical ventilation, longer stays in the intensive care unit and in the hospital, increased healthcare costs, and increased risk of morbidity and mortality. In preterm neonates, prolonged mechanical ventilation for respiratory distress syndrome can contribute to the development of chronic lung disease. And prolonged mechanical ventilation in extremely low birth weight infants is also associated with neurodevelopmental delay. In 2012, CDC convened the Pediatric and Neonatal Ventilator Associated Event Working Group to determine the feasibility of applying a VAE surveillance algorithm to inpatient neonatal and pediatric locations. The working group, which included representatives specializing in neonatal and pediatric critical care and infectious disease, determined at that time there was not enough data available to apply a VAE definition to these populations. Then in January of 2016, a study by Kokora Sadal was published that demonstrated that events detected by changes in fraction of inspired oxygen, or FiO2, and mean airway pressure were associated with increases in length of stay and mortality in pediatric patients. And if you're interested in gaining a better understanding of how the PDVAE surveillance definition was developed, I recommend that you take a look at this article. Based on the results of the Coca-Cola Sadal study, the working group proceeded with the development and implementation of the pediatric VAE surveillance definition as a single tiered algorithm. And once they developed the surveillance definition, they field tested it, and then it became available for use in NHSN surveillance in 2019. Now that you have the background for the development of the PDVAE surveillance definition, let's look at some important information to have before you begin surveillance for these events. First things first, where can you find all the information about PDVAE surveillance? If you go to the NHSN homepage at the link on the slide, you will see links to web pages for acute care, long-term acute care, and inpatient rehabilitation facilities. And these are the types of facilities that are eligible to perform PDVAE surveillance. On each of these facility pages, you will see the link to the PDVAE web page, as indicated by the red arrow on the right side of the screen. Once you're on the PDVAE web page, you'll find all the PDVAE specific resources, including the protocol, calculator, training, FAQs and forms, as well as some additional resources. This web page, which can also be accessed directly using the link at the top of the slide, is your go-to spot for all things PDVAE. We'll explore some of these things throughout this presentation, but I recommend you become familiar with all the available resources if you are performing PDVAE surveillance. 
In particular, I want to mention that the PVAE FAQs provide additional guidance on how to apply the PVAE surveillance definition. And you can find answers to common questions on this page. Next, next let's look at which patients are eligible for PVAE surveillance. I want to start by defining what a ventilator is. A ventilator is defined as any device used to support respiration through the application of positive pressure that is delivered through an artificial airway, which is specifically an oral or nasal endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy tube. Devices that are not considered a ventilator are devices which apply positive pressure to the airway from some external device, such as a face mask or nasal mask. And this definition is in the uh, PDVAE protocol. Now that we've defined what a ventilator is, let's look at the inclusion and exclusion criteria for PDVAE. So who is included? Ventilated patients in acute care hospitals, long-term acute care hospitals, and inpatient rehabilitation facilities who are located in a pediatric or neonatal inpatient location where you can collect patient days and ventilator days are included in PDVAE surveillance. PDVAE surveillance is location-based, not age-based. So ventilated adult patients who may be housed in a pediat pediatric location are included in PDVAE surveillance. Patients who are not eligible for PDVAE VAE surveillance include those who are on extracorporeal life support or pericorporeal, pericorporeal membrane oxygenation. For these patients, the ineligibility period only applies while they are receiving these types of support. Also not eligible for PDVAE surveillance are patients in non-acute care locations in acute care settings, as well as pediatric patients housed in adult inpatient locations. Remember, PDVAE surveillance is based on location of the patient, not the age of the patient. Sometimes we get questions about the patient's eligibility for surveillance when they are in specific modes of mechanical ventilation. If the patient is on high frequency ventilation or APRV, airway pressure release ventilation, they are included in PDVAE surveillance. And you would also include patients if they are receiving mechanical ventilation, as well as any of the other therapies that are listed on the slide. And here we have our first knowledge check. A mechanically ventilated pediatric patient was admitted to the adult ICU. Can PDVAE surveillance be performed for this patient? Yes or no? Um, looks like we've got a 60-40 split uh, between no at 60% and yes at 40%. And the correct answer is no. A mechanically ventilated pediatric patient in the adult site ICU cannot, sorry, you cannot perform PVA surveillance for a pediatric patient in the adult ICU. PDVA surveillance is location-based, not age-based, so you can only conduct PDVA surveillance in pediatric and neonatal inpatient locations. Now let's take a look at the PDVA definition. Before we start, I want to emphasize that the PDVA definition algorithm is for use in surveillance only. It is not a clinical definition algorithm, and it is not intended for use in the clinical management of patients. Once a patient is placed on mechanical ventilation, you will begin looking for a baseline period of stability or improvement on the ventilator that is immediately followed by a sustained period of worsening oxygenation on the ventilator. And if these parameters are met, a PDVAE is identified. P 
PVAEs are determined by identification of deterioration in respiratory status after a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator, which is assessed by monitoring two key parameters that reflect oxygenation status in neonatal and pediatric ventilated patients. These are fraction of inspired oxygen, or FiO2, and mean airway pressure. And we're gonna look at each of these parameters individually. FiO2 refers to the fraction of oxygen in inspired gas. When speaking about FiO2, we refer to the value as either a percentage or as a decimal. For example, for room air, the FiO2 is 0.21 and the oxygen concentration is 21%. So 0.21 is equivalent to 21%. FiO2 is a setting on the ventilator that reflects the percent of O2 in the air that the ventilator is supplying to the patient. That value, the value that can be set on the ventilator is typically in the range from 0.21 or 21% to 1.0 or 100%. FiO2 values may be documented as, for example, 0.21, 21%, or simply as 21 and these values are used interchangeably. Mean airway pressure is the mean or average pressure exerted on the airway and lungs from the beginning of inspiration until the beginning of the next inspiration. MAP is not a setting on a ventilator. It is a value that is calculated using the positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP the peak inspiratory pressure, or PIP, inspiratory time, and frequency. And here we have knowledge check number two. For the purposes of PVAE surveillance, what does MAP mean? A, mean arterial pressure, or B, mean airway pressure. Very good. The majority of you selected the correct answer, which is B, mean airway pressure. For the purposes of PVA surveillance, MAP stands for mean airway pressure. Now that we've defined the key terms of FiO2 and MAP, let's talk about their use in PVA surveillance. The first step in PVA surveillance is to, determine, is to determine the daily minimum values for FiO2 and MAP. So how do you do this? You start by reviewing the FiO2 and MAP values that are documented in the patient's medical record during the calendar day. And be sure to use a calendar day and not any other 24 hour capture period. When determining the daily minimum values for FiO2 and MAP, you will use all documented values that are recorded throughout the calendar day during times when the patient is receiving support from an eligible mode of mechanical ventilation. You'll include FiO2 and MAP values documented during weaning or mechanical ventilation liberation trials as long as the patient is receiving ventilator support during those trials. And you'll exclude FiO2 and MAP values documented during periods of time when the patient is on extracorporeal life support, such as ECMO, or paracorporeal membrane oxygenation. The daily minimum FiO2 is defined as the lowest documented FiO2 setting that was maintained for greater than one hour during a calendar day. When determining the daily minimum FiO2, you'll start by looking at all the eligible FiO2 values documented throughout the calendar day for the lowest FiO2 setting that was maintained for greater than one hour. And if there was no setting that has been maintained for greater than one hour, then you will select the lowest setting regardless of the period of time in which the setting was maintained. And this may occur when ventilation was initiated late in the calendar day or discontinued earlier in the calendar day or if the FAO2 settings have been very unstable throughout the calendar day. When FIO2 settings are documented at greater than hour, hourly intervals, for example, every two hours or every four hours, 
it is straightforward to determine when values have been maintained for greater than one hour. However, when FIO2 settings are documented hourly or more frequently, it is not as straightforward. So we provide guidance on how to determine if the lowest value has been maintained for greater than an hour, if documentation of these settings occurs at hourly or more frequent intervals. And these, this guidance is also in the protocol for your review. Please note that NHSN is not recommending or requiring that you document hourly or at any specific interval. This guidance just provides a standardized way to determine what greater than one hour would be. And let's take a look at some examples. In this example, what is the daily FIO2 for Monday? And I'll give you a moment to look at the settings and make that determination. And in this example, the correct answer is 0.75. You'll notice that the lowest value documented for the day is 0 0.70 at 3 a.m. However, at, at 4 a.m., the FAO2 is documented as 0 0.90. So while the lowest value is 0 0.7, it wasn't maintained for greater than one hour. Remember, if FAO2 values are documented hourly, two consecutive recordings at the same setting are needed to meet the greater than one hour requirement. So in this instance, you would then look for the next lowest value that was maintained, was documented and determine if that value was maintained for greater than an hour, one hour. And in this example, 0.75 is the next lowest value documented on the calendar day, and it was maintained for greater than one hour from 12 p.m. through 11 p.m. So 0.75 is the daily minimum FIO2 for Monday. In this example, what is the daily minimum FIO2 for Monday and Tuesday? The answer for Monday is 0.70. On Monday, there are two FIO2 values documented during the calendar day, 0.70 at 2300 and then 0.80 at 2330 and neither setting was maintained for greater than one hour during the calendar day. When there is no setting that has been maintained for greater than one hour during the calendar day, then you will select the lowest setting regardless of the period of time in which the setting was maintained. Therefore, the daily minimum value for Monday is simply the lowest value documented, which is 0 0.70. And just a reminder that when you're look, making daily minimum value determinations. You're looking specifically at each calendar day individually. You're not going to look back to a previous calendar day or forward to the next calendar day to see if a value is maintained for greater than one hour. You're only looking at each calendar day individually to determine the lowest value. On Tuesday, the lowest FIO2 value is 0.75. This value is documented at 6 a.m. and then again at 9 a.m. So the FIO2 is maintained at 0.75 for greater than one hour. And you would select 0.75 as your daily minimum value for Tuesday. Let's move on to MAP or mean airway pressure. The daily minimum MAP is defined as the lowest documented lowest value documented during a calendar day, regardless of how long the value is maintained. When determining the daily minimum map, if the map values are documented out to the decimal places, you will round the near, to the nearest whole number using this guidance. 0 0.00 to 0 0.49 rounds down, and 0.50 to 0.99 rounds up. Additionally, when determining the daily minimum MAP, if the patient is less than 30 days old, MAP values between zero and eight are assigned a daily minimum value of eight. And for patients aged 30 days or older, MAP values of zero to 10 are assigned a daily minimum value of 10. And we'll look at a couple of examples. 
in this example, the patient is less than 30 days of age. What is the daily minimum MAP for Monday? And remember, MAP is identified by the lowest value recorded for each calendar day, regardless of how long it was maintained. For Monday, the daily minimum MAP is eight. While the lowest documented MAP value is five at 9 a.m., remember that for patients less than 30 days of age, MAP values of zero to eight are considered to be eight. Therefore, in this example, the daily minimum, minimum MAP is eight. In this example, the patient is at least 30 days old. Um, what is the lowest or the daily minimum map for Monday? In this example, the correct answer is 10. While the lowest documented map value is five at 9 a.m., remember that for patients 30 days of age or older, map values of zero to 10 are considered to be 10. Therefore, in this example, the daily minimum map is 10. In this example, for a patient of any age, what is the daily minimum map for Monday? The correct answer is 12. Remember, map values are rounded to the nearest whole number. Therefore, in this example, the daily minimum map is 12. And here we have knowledge check number three. Daily minimum, daily minimum map is defined as the lowest map value documented during the calendar day, regardless of how long the value is maintained. A, true, or B, false. Very good, 72% of you chose the correct answer, which is A. Daily minimum map is the lowest map value documented during the calendar day, regardless of how long the value is maintained. But when you're determining the daily minimum map, keep the following in mind. Map values documented at the decimal place are rounded to the nearest whole number, and MAP values are assigned based on patient's age. So if patients less than 30 days old, MAP values of zero to eight are assigned a MAP of eight. And patients 30 days of age or older, MAP values of zero to 10 are assigned a MAP value of 10. Now that we know how to determine daily minimum values, we can apply the PDVAE algorithm. Remember from earlier in the presentation, PVAEs are determined by identification of deterioration in respiratory status after a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator. This is a snapshot of the algorithm from the PVAE protocol, and we'll look at the details of the algorithm more in depth in the next few slides. For surveillance purposes, if a patient is mechanically ventilated for any portion of the calendar day, they are considered to be mechanically ventilated on that calendar day. And in order to meet the PVA definition, a patient must be mechanically ventilated for some portion of the day for at least four consecutive calendar days. So that the requirements of at least two days of stability or improvement and at least two days of evidence of worsening of oxygenation on the ventilator are fulfilled. And remember those daily minimum FiO2 and MAP values we determined? Now we're going to use those daily minimum values to identify both a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator, and then identify the period that indicates worsening oxygenation. And unlike the daily minimum value determinations that compare values within the calendar day, the period of stability or improvement and the period of worsening oxygenation are identified by comparing daily minimum values across calendar days.
The period of stability or improvement and the evidence of worsening oxygenation must occur in the same parameter. So for example, you can't have a period of stability in the FiO2 parameter and worsening oxygenation in the MAP parameter and meet the PBAE definition. Each of the parameters is assessed independently of the other, which means PBAE can be met in the MAP parameter even if there isn't a period of stability or improvement or a period of worsening in oxygenation identified in the FiO2 parameter and vice versa. So how do we define a period of stability or improvement? A period of stability or improvement is defined as at least two calendar days of stable or decreasing daily minimum FiO2 or MAP values. Stability is illustrated on in the first table where the daily minimum FiO2 values are the same across calendar days. An improvement is illustrated in the second table where the daily minimum FiO2 values are decreasing across calendar days. And when making PDBA determinations, we will be looking specifically at the baseline period, which is the two calendar days immediately preceding the first day of evidence of worsening oxygenation. And how do we define evidence of worsening oxygenation? After a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator, the patient has at least one of the following indicators of worsening oxygenation. There is either an increase in the daily minimum FiO2 of at least 25 points over the daily minimum FiO2 of the first day in the baseline period that is sustained for at least two calendar days, or there is an increase in daily minimum MAP values of at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum MAP of the first day in the baseline period sustained for at least two calendar days. And that's a mouthful, so we'll take a better look at that, closer look. But first we have knowledge check number four. PDVAE can be met with a baseline period of stability or improvement in the FiO2 parameter and a period of worsening oxygenation in the MAP parameter. True or false? And we have 69% of you said true and 31% of you said false. And the correct answer is false. When meeting the PDVA definition, the baseline period of stability or improvement and the period of worsening oxygenation must occur in the same parameter. Um, the FiO2 parameter and the MAP parameter are assessed independently of the other. And PDVA can be met in only the FiO2 parameter or only in the MAP parameter or in both parameters. So let's start by looking at the FiO2 parameter. In the FiO2 parameter, we're looking for a baseline period of stability or improvement that is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum FiO2 of at least 25 points over the daily minimum FiO2 of the first day in the baseline period that is sustained for at least two calendar days. And please note, when we refer to an increase over the baseline period of greater than or equal to 0.25 or greater than or equal to 25 points or greater than or equal to 25%, the increase is the same. If using the percentage reference as in 25%, it's not to be interpreted as a percentage of the value in the baseline period. It's an addition of 25 percentage points over the value of the first day in the baseline period. So for example, if the value in the baseline period is 50%, the FiO2 must increase to at least 75% in order to meet. Let's look at some examples. To assess for PDVAE, you will be looking at the daily minimum values across calendar days for a period of stability or improvement that is immediately followed by evidence of worsening oxygenation as defined in the algorithm. In this example, there is a period of stability in the daily minimum values in the FAO2 parameter on vet days two and three. And this baseline period is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum FIO2 on vent day four 
that meets the requirement of at least 25 points over the daily minimum value on the first day of the baseline period. Since the increase in the daily minimum FIO2 of at least 25 points over the daily minimum FIO2 on the first day of the baseline period is sustained for at least two calendar days on days four and five, PVAE is met in the FIO2 parameter. And remember, we're assessing the, P, the FIO2 parameter independently of what may be occurring in the MAP parameter. In this example, there is a period of improvement in the daily minimum values in the FIO2 parameter on vent days two and three, when the daily minimum FIO2 decreases from 50 to 40. And this baseline period is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum FIO2 on vent day four. However, the increase in the daily minimum FIO2 on vent day four is not at least 25 points over the daily minimum FIO2 of the first day in the baseline period, which is vent day two, where the daily minimum FIO2 was 50. So PBA is not met in this case. In this example, there is again a period of stability in the daily minimum values in the FIO2 parameter on vent days two and three. And this baseline period is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum FIO2 on vent day four that meets the requirement of at least 25 points over the first day of the baseline period. However, the increase in the daily minimum FIO2 of at least 25 points over the daily minimum FIO2 of the first day of the baseline period is not sustained for at least two days. On vet day five, the daily minimum FIO2 is 50, which is not at least 25 points over the daily minimum FIO2 of 40 on vent day two, the first day of the baseline period. So PVAE is not met. And now let's look at the MAP parameter. On the MAP parameter, we're looking for a baseline period of stability or improvement in the, that is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum map of at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum map of the first day in the baseline period that is sustained for at least two calendar days. And let's look at some examples. In this example of a patient who is less than 30 days of age, there's a period of stability in the daily minimum values in the map parameter on vent days two and three. And if you recall, MAP values less than eight or zero to eight are equivalent to eight for patients less than 30 days old. This baseline period is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum MAP on vent day four that meets the requirements of at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum value on the first day of the baseline period. Since the increase in the daily minimum map of at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum map of the first day of the baseline period is sustained for at least two calendar days on vent days four and five, PBAE is met in the map parameter. In this example of a patient of at least 30 days of age, there's a period of stability in the daily minimum values in the map parameter on vent days two and three. Remember for patients 30 days of age or older, MAP values of zero to 10 are equivalent to 10. This baseline period is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum MAP on vent day four. However, the increase in the daily minimum MAP on vent day four is not at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum MAP of the first day in the baseline period, which is vent day two, or the daily minimum MAP is 10. So PDBA is not met. In this example, the patient is at least 30 days old of age, and there is a period of stability in the daily minimum values in the MAP parameter on vent days two and three. And this baseline period is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum MAP on vent day four that meets the requirements of at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum value on the first day of the baseline period. Since the increase in the daily minimum map of at least four centimeters of water over the daily minimum map of the first day of the baseline period is sustained for at least two calendar days on vent days four and five, 
PVAE is met in the MAP parameter. Now that we can identify a PVAE, the next concept to cover is date of event. For PVAE, the date of event is the date of onset of worsening oxygenation. The earliest date of event for a PVAE is mechanical ventilation day three, which is the first day of worsening oxygenation. And the first two days of mechanical ventilation can be used to establish the baseline period. Additionally, PVAEs are defined by a 14-day period. The date of event is day one of the 14-day event period, and a new PVAE cannot be reported until the 14-day period has elapsed. So for example, if a PVAE is reported with date of event March 1st, this sets up a 14-day event period of March 1st through 14th, and the earliest date a new PVAE can be detected and reported is March 15th. The two days of stability or improvement for a new PVAE can occur during the previous 14-day event period. In this example of a patient less than 30 days of age, looking at the MAP parameter, a baseline period of stability is defined on vent days two and three. And vent day four is the first day of the period of worsening oxygenation that meets parameters. So event day four is the PVAE date of event. And the, P and the 14 day event period in this case would be mechanical ventilations day four through mechanical ventilation day 17. Now let's look at the PVAE calculator. And as Emily explained in her VAE presentation, the PVAE calculator um, is a very helpful tool that we, you, that we offer to assist with PVAE determinations. It can be accessed from the PVAE webpage from the link at the top of the page, and also from the link on the PVAE events page. Once you're on the PDBA calculator landing page, click on the box at the bottom of the page to access the calendar or the calculator. Please be sure to read the instructions on how to use a calculator and you can click on more for additional instructions on using the calculator. The additional instructions let you know that the calculator runs locally on your computer and that any data you enter is not stored or transmitted to NHSN. And it also provides some additional information about how to best utilize the calculator. The first step in using the calculator is to enter the mechanical ventilation start date by selecting the date from the pop-up calendar. When selecting the mechanical ventilation start date, you want to enter the actual date on which the current episode of mechanical ventilation was initiated. If a patient is admitted to your facility on a ventilator, use the date that the mechanical ventilation was started pre-admission. If you don't know the exact date, you can enter an estimated date. And it's important to enter the correct date so the ventilators are counted correctly. Remember, for the purposes of PVAE determinations, MAP values are adjusted based on the patient's age. So the calculator needs to know the patient's age in order to quick, correctly interpret the data. And if the patient is less than 30 days of age on the mechanical ventilation start date, the calculator will additionally ask you to enter the patient's day of life on the mechanical ventilation start date. In this example, the patient is less than 30 days of age on the mechanical ventilation start date. On the calculator, you will enter the daily minimum MAP and FiO2 values for each calendar day. Remember, it is important that you understand how to determine the daily minimum MAP values, so you, daily minimum MAP and FiO2 values, so you're entering the correct data into the calculator. Also, when entering FiO2 values into the calculator, be sure to use whole numbers. For example, enter 50 and not 0 0.5. One of the nice features of PDBA calculator is that you can enter the actual daily minimum MAP values into the calculator, and the calculator will adjust the MAP values for you based on the patient's age. And once you've entered the daily minimum values, select Calculate PDBAE.
And remember, for patients less than 30 days of age, the calculator interpret interprets the map values of zero to eight as eight. So as I mentioned before, you can act enter the actual map values and the calculator will automatically adjust them for you. So once the map values of less than eight are equilibrated to eight, a baseline period of stability is identified in the event on, is identified on event days two and three. And this is immediately followed by an increase in the daily minimum map of at least four on vent day four. And this is sustained for at least two calendar days. And a PDVA is identified with a date of event on day four. Oh. Sorry, I forgot my clicks. Um, now let's look at the same data for a patient who's 30 days of age or older on the mechanical ventilation start date. As you can see, for patients of at least 30 days of age or older, the calculator interprets the map values of 0 to 10 is equal to 10. And a PDB is not in, identified since increase in the daily minimum map is not at least 4 over the daily minimum map in the baseline period. Another nice feature of the calculator is that you can select the explain button for a pop-up explanation of how the determination was made. And here's knowledge check number five. The PDVA calculator is only as good as the data that is entered, or are entered, sorry, grammar. Um, if incorrect data are entered, the PDVA determination will not be correct, A true or B false. Good job, 98% of you said true, and that is true. I'm sure you've all heard the term garbage in and equals garbage out. So if you incorrect data are entered, the PDVA calculator will provide the wrong determination. Remember the PDVA calculator is a valuable tool to assist with PDVA determinations, but is not a substitute for you knowing and understanding the PD VA protocol and algorithm. Um, I'm running a bit short on time. So this next se section on reporting PVAE, I'm going to skip. Um, all this data is the most important thing from takeaway from this is that there are forms and instructions on the PVA web page that will guide you through reporting the proper data elements into the NHSN application, including event details and denominator information. Sorry for the quick click. Um, I've covered a lot of information in this presentation and I'm sorry that I ran out of time to give you a little bit more detail about reporting um, into the application, but I thank you for your attention um, and thank you for joining this presentation. Just a couple more things before we wrap up. Um, today's presentation really only covered the basics of PDVA surveillance, key terms, daily minimum values, the algorithm, the calculator, and obviously not the reporting. But it's not comprehensive of all the information that's necessary for performing PDVA surveillance. So it's really important that you familiarize yourself with the PDVA webpage read the protocol and the tables of instructions, read the FAQs, review the training resources. Our educators have done a great job mapping out the best way to approach learning about PDBAE. Use a PDBAE calculator. You can play with that. It's on your, your local desktop. So put in different scenarios and hit that explain button, see what happens and what the results are. Um, and as always, we're here for support, so submit 
any questions or case reviews that you may have to us on the NHSN team at ServiceNow or via the NHSN at cdc.gov address. Thank you.